All right. Uh, okay, if that's all the announcements we have this morning, we'll go ahead. We have uh, Eric with us to talk on uh, Civil Air Patrol. So Eric, you are a co-host, so you can uh, have the floor and do your thing. Okay. And thank you for being here. Uh, good morning. Let's see, I'm a, Alex, I'm a Teams person, so let's see how I do this. All righty, that's me. <laughs> All right, let's see, share screen. All righty. Wait up, oh, there it is. Share. Okay, could everyone see that? Very good. All right, let's see, start slideshow. Oops. Oh, okay, cool. All right, so um, good morning, group. My name is Eric Ferdinand Walters. I, um, I'm a part of the Aries group. I'm a part of El Cajon Amateur Club. I've been a ham for, God, a couple of years now. It's been before COVID. Um, I've always been interested in it. I did comms when I was in the military, and it, it fascinated me what you could do with um, a piece of wire if you set up a, an antenna on what you could receive. So I've, I'm, I love this stuff and um, I like participating in it. I'm also a volunteer with the Civil Air Patrol, our local Civil Air Patrol squadron here in San Diego. So Rob asked me to tell a little about Civil Air Patrol and what we do. So I have, um, so I'm not gonna kill you guys with the slides. <laughs> and I have lots of pictures and a video. So, um, so what's the role of Civil Air Patrol in disaster recovery? Um, as a total force, we the auxiliary of the United States Air Force. Civil Air Patrol, we do a lot of search to find loss and provide comfort in time of disaster and work to um, keep the homeland safe. All right, disaster, um, CAP provides air and ground transport and extended communication network. Um, volunteer member fly disaster um, relief to, um, officials to remote location, provide manpower leadership in local, state, and national disaster relief organization. A little background on Civil Air Patrol. Civil Air Patrol is American premier service organization for carrying out emergency service disaster relief mission nationwide. And as auxiliary of the United States Air Force, um, we. We are civilians that's volunteer, and we do a um, search and rescue. And like the slide says, um, right now we're up to. Last time I checked, we we're like fifty-six thousand members. That includes cadet and senior members. Senior members are adults. Uh, we also have a component that we deal with the um, with cadets, um, ages from twelve to twenty-one, or they could after eighteen they could stay a cadet. Some usually do when they go off to college, or they could become senior members if they want to. Um, we volunteer service, um, serving the American community, saving lives, and shaping the futures of the young cadets. What are the three missions? So, Civil Air Patrol have three missions. We are you supposed to be changing slides, uh, Eric? Whoa, it's not changing? It's not changing slides. <clears throat> Oh my gosh. Okay. So how do I do this then? Okay. Are you, you are sharing your screen. Okay. Pick up at the top of your screen and says, start slideshow. I'm looking. Huh. Okay. How do I do this? All right, let me stop sharing. Okay, let's go back to share and okay. Which slide is this? What are the what are the what are the three yeah. missions of Civil Air Patrol? Okay, so how do I get this to move forward? Hmm. Usually okay. you can use a cursor key. There's a, or in the lower right corner, 
lower left corner of your screen, there were some little arrows back and forward a minute ago. Okay, I'll yeah. try. I'll, away now. I'll try. Oh, okay, there it is. Okay, yeah. I'll try. I'll, I'll try that. Okay, so um, okay, you guys didn't see all this, did you? Uh, did the screen change? Yes, yes, it's changing now. Oh, it's changing now. Okay. So this is all what I said earlier. And here we are. <laughs> Thanks for letting me know. So Civil Air Patrol was chartered by the uh, US Congress to perform three missions, the aerospace education, cadet programs, and emergency services. And emergency services, uh, we, we provide both air and ground member perform emergency services for state and local agencies, as well as the federal government and uh, civil, as the civilian auxiliary of the Air Force. So we do, we work a lot with the, um, here in San Diego County, we work a lot with the local sheriff department. So we, we do a lot of exercise with the sheriff department um, for search and rescue, down airplanes, missing hikers. We're always called out to go, um, and look for hikers it's up north. Actually, we had a call this winter, but unfortunately, the person had expired. Um, I think they had dementia and walked away. And um, we did find them, but um, they were expired. Um, we also do a lot. We used to work before COVID with the forestry department out at Three Sisters and the local parks here in um, San Diego County. It amazes me that people will spend a ton of money to look good, to go hiking, but bring no water with them. And when you ask them, where, where's your water? They, oh, oh, it's okay. And then they have to realize once they get to the top, if the sun is up, it's pretty hot. They have to come back down. And you know, they, a lot of our um, interaction with the public in the parks is, is mainly dehydration water. Uh, did it change? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. So aerospace education, uh, we all, we do aerospace education. We work with, um, aviation and STEM related careers for, um, for the students, for the, um, and we also, we have a, what's called a in-house and outside, um, aerospace education program in-house. We deal with teaching the cadets rocket three flights, they go on all rides, they have um, glider all rides, powered all ride, which is could be in a Cessna 172, uh, a, a, a 182 or a, a Torbo 206 here in California. Now, Civil Air Patrol is in all 50 states and we have um, in a couple of countries, we have a Civil Air Patrol in England, a Civil Air Patrol unit in Japan and a Civil Air Patrol unit in Germany. So we do have overseas um, Civil Air Patrol squadrons, but they have to be U.S. citizens. Um, usually, it's um, kids that's on a military base and that participate. Especially in Japan, is very big at the naval bases there. Um, so we do external AE. So I go out and I talk to um, the local schools. I usually hit up the um, middle schools because I'm looking to recruit the um, the kids age 12 and up to join Civil Air Patrol. Um, so it, it's amazing in our program that a student or a cadet could fly an airplane before he receives a driver's license, he or she receives a driver's license. So I've, I've had cadets that their parents had to bring them to the airport and then they get into the plane and go flying. So they can't drive a car, but they could fly a plane at age 15. They could be licensed to fly an airplane. So that's, we have scholarships for that. Um, we just started um, drones, UAS, um, and my squadron just received a grant from General Dyke um, Atomics to provide training to the cadets and maybe a few senior members to get their part 107 drone license and be fully um, mission capable because now we're starting to use drones in a lot of our emergency services mission. Um, we work close um, back to emergency service along with um, CAL fires also. So we're starting to use drones to take aerial pictures of the burn areas along with our aircrafts. So that's just a little of what we do with um, aerospace education. 
And obviously we have the cadet program. The cadet program, we work with the youths and um, from age 12 to 21. And we teach them aerospace, fitness, character development, leadership. So they have all aspects of becoming a better citizen to serve their community and um, the Civil Air Patrol as a whole. So these are some of the agencies we work with. Cal OES, on the Cal OES, we work with Cal Fire. Um, not that much with the local fire department, but a lot with Cal Fire. We work with FEMA, so we get activated for any disaster, Katrina, um, as for example. Local law enforcement is mainly with the sheriff department. So down here in San Diego, we work closely with San Diego Sheriff. If we're in Riverside, we have squadrons in Riverside. We work with Riverside Sheriff Department. Um, El Centro is unique, so we work with the local police and sheriff in El, in um, Imperial um, Valley. Um, we work with the American Red Cross, the Salvation Army, um, the United States military, and uh, government agencies. Government agency also include those agencies with three initials. I can't get into details and in what we do for them, but <laughs> we do work with three initial agencies for the U.S. government. And um, also Border Patrol. We do a lot of um, Border Patrol. Uh, um, we assist the Border Patrol in um, border uh, security, both in the north in Canada and south here in um, Mexico, called the Mexican border. So our role mainly is search and rescue, disaster relief, aerospace education. Um, we are headquarters in Maxwell Air Force Base in um, Montgomery, Alabama, and the, we are not the military branch, but we are a branch of the United States Air Force. We are the civilian auxiliary. And if you could read from the statement there, the, um, CAP is not a government agency or military service, but we act as a volunteer civilian auxiliary of the United States Air Force. And um, we are um, used by all departments and agencies and branches of the federal government. Um, a little bit what we do with the Red Cross and the Salvation Army. Um, we, we, um, they're, they're, we usually do transport of, um, for the Red Cross is mainly um, organs and medicines that had to be taken across country. We, we've, um, they call us and we usually, because we, um, Civil Air Patrol has the largest fleet. Actually, we have the largest Air Force um, fleet of privately owned airplanes. Uh, we are able to do it at a low cost instead of calling up the military and, um, and having them to do it. So here's a quick video. Let me see if it'll work. Ah. Do you do you guys see that? Not yet. Not yet. Okay, let's do this. And let's go here and right here. You you what about now? Okay, that should work. All right. This is you're right. This is easier than teams. You don't hear audio. Oh, no audio? So how do I do the audio? Okay, how do I do the audio? Anybody help? Probably the most expeditious way to do it right now is to just put your mic up by your your PC speaker there. There is a way of doing it, but oh, I don't have a mic on the headset. Maybe lean into the PC speaker so if your headset mic picks it up. Audio. Uh, video. Let me go to the video settings here. Video touch line. Oh, that's for me. This is not playing the video. Why is this is the video not playing? Oh my gosh. Yeah, it might be under the share settings. All right, 
how do I pull up the share settings? Okay, wow, this, I thought this would have worked. This is why you need a cadet on the line here. Huh? They've been figuring this out in a heartbeat. Why is the audio not working? There's a box that you click on, but I can't remember in what uh, what page that you go to to uh, click on it, and it's uh, will then play the video. Video with audio. Oh my gosh, this is embarrassing. Okay. And I don't know how to do it either. So I can't. Uh... When you're on the video, there's a little speaker that um, showed up there in the bottom left corner. I wonder if that. Uh... Yeah, I turned that up all the way. Huh. Yeah, you can try going to your preferences audio and there's a box, that checkbox that it says show in meeting option to enable original sound. Okay, hold on. So you need to talk me through on how to get there. Sure. Okay, go to preferences, preferences. up in the, in the Zoom application. And I think this is what we're going to try anyway. Preferences, I, I, I don't see that. Go in the upper left hand corner. All right. On the Zoom application, go ahead and select Zoom preferences. Okay, hold on. I'm still looking for that. Upper left, the only thing on my upper left, it says view. Okay, click on the window that has your. your your video in it my video or me okay me you. okay I, 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 then, I clicked on it then do you have preferences it says mute audio stop video rename pin spotlight everyone and hides um self viewing okay usually when you click that you should see a menu a horizontal menu selection bar so well in any event Rather than you know do troubleshooting on this, I think somebody just said you could take your headset off for the duration of the video so that your microphone is going to pick up the audio. All right, hold on. Let me get to the back of the computer here. Disconnect the headset. Right. Oh, you're. You, you huh? can still have. You can still use your headset. It's just you're going to take the microphone and hold it up to the speaker. Can you hear the audio when you're playing it back? Yeah. Hold on. I don't have external speakers in this thing. Okay. Oh. All right. Well, sorry about that. Well, his speaker is his headset. Nothing heard. He's got his headset off. He can't hear you either. Yeah, if he disconnects his headset from his computer, we won't hear anything. And then, yeah. Okay, well, that's not working. Sorry about that. It was a video. Um, Nickelodeon came out to San Diego and did a video. Could you guys hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Nickelodeon came out to San Diego and did a a, a presentation on the squadron, and it had a it in it 
it covered a lot of good information on what we did and and who we are and i just wanted to show that video oh my gosh it's not working the audio is not working okay let's get back to the to the presentation here okay share screen uh, Okay, so your, your slide shows up now. Okay. So this here is where I was at, right here. And the video is, this is the link to the video. If anyone wants to see it, you could copy and paste this link. And um, I have to figure out why this didn't work. Okay, if you, if you play, copy if you put, yeah. but if you copy and paste it into the chat, then we can get it from there. Okay, so you're gonna have to talk me through that also. Okay, so here I go, cop, okay. Oops, I can't do it from the slide. Uh, it's not letting me do it from the slide. Okay, hold on one second. Okay. I think if you bring up the video on your computer and when you click the share screen button, click on that video that's playing, you should we should be able to hear the audio. But you have to close the, the slideshow. Oh, okay, hold on. So let's close that, share screen, put up the video. Okay, so do you see the, the three cadets? Yes. Okay, let, let's see if this works. Uh, it's not working either. Well, no, there's a box you have to click. I can't recall where it is. Let me try and share my screen for fun here, see if it'll work. Dennis just posted up the link in chat. Yeah, I just went ahead and put the link in uh, in chat. I, I googled uh, 
Nickelodeon, Civil Air Patrol, San Diego. Yeah, and it works for me. I get, I get, uh, I get audio. I just tried that link and brought it up, and it works great. Dennis, you see uh, Bill's suggestion to share your screen and maybe uh, we'll hear your audio. Um, okay, stand by while I see if that works. Uh, screen, screen sharing disabled. Probably because there's one running already. Yeah. Or you or you have to be a co-host to share your screen. I'm not sure. I don't see a way to make you a co-host. Maybe Dave knows how. So what you would say, run it in movie mode? How do you do that? Well, it's pr at this point, it's probably uh something that people can just go ahead and uh, uh operate on their own oh, okay let me figure out how to get back to the slideshow here da, 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 da. Oh, where is the slide now oh my gosh okay Okay, so after the video, okay, do everyone see that? Yeah, we're back online now. Okay, so they, they, I have a couple of pictures and um, of the disasters that we work with. Um, We, we did a lot of stuff with the fires up in Northern Cal a couple of years ago. Um, this is one of the airplanes that um, helped out with Katrina. Um, here we are at a crash site. Uh, this was some um, 9-11. We were the only um, airplanes that were allowed to fly after 9-11 with Civil Air Patrol. So they wanted us to get aerial pictures of the um, of the um, with disaster. Um, this is um, one of the cadets receiving his um, certificate for just this was his first flight in this Cessna. This is a Cessna one um, eighty two. Um, we also do <clears throat> um, orientation flights with the um, Air Force. This is a a C-17, we did an orientation flight out of March on a C-17. Um, also on a KC-130, I'm not a KC, it's a refueling plane. I don't know what the Air Force calls it, but what we do is we split the group. Half goes in the C-17, half goes in the, the KC-35, um, I think it's called. And we uh, they do a, a mid-air refueling so the cadets get to go into the boom and the um, senior members that's there to see how to re refueling is done. Um, this is a cadet receiving an award. Um, we um, also have like basic training for the cadets, which is called encampment. So once a year they go up to San Luis Obispo at the um, National Guard base and they learn all aspects of um, 
of leadership, making their beds, everything that they learned. So when, when your cadet come back home and they said they don't know to clean up their room, they're lying. <laughs> we do glider flights also. We have a couple of cadets that um, just glider certified. Um, we do reef across America every year. We lay reef at the, um, the um, soldiers <clears throat> tombstones. And this is what's us working with here with the Salvation Army in um, in El Cajon. Um, during COVID, we distributed um, food there. Um, this is um, LA and the Red Cross. We were up distributing food there. Um, this is over at Miramar with the, um, the legacy Hornets. Um, we, we did a tour that the cadets get to go, um, didn't get to fly. I, mean, I wanted to fly, but you have to have a suit, <laughs> a special suit that's made for you. But they, um, they, we usually do tour and that's a part of aerospace education and cadet program. And we also pursued, um, ELTs, ELTs, emergency location. Um, this airplane that came, it was at um, Montgomery Field, and I guess the pilot landed a little hard and didn't know that he had set off the ELT the day before. And so the Air Force will call, uh, actually it goes to NOAA, and NOAA will call the Air Force, depending on where it's at, and then the Air Force dispatch us, and we go and pursue it and track it down and turn it off. Because if that um, freak, if that beacon is on it blocks all the emergency transmission in the area so that's why it's a priority and this is us we are part of the air force um we're part of california wing and down here in san diego we um we are in group eight san diego group eight so civil air patrol is split up into different organizations within civil air patrol you have what's called a cadet squadron a senior squadron and a composite squadron now the composite squadron is made up of both senior members and cadets and they run the squadron together we have one com composite squadron here in san diego group eight and that's up in carlsbad and we have cadet squadrons cadet squadrons is both have both senior members and cadets, but the cadets run the squadron. Us as senior members, we're just there to oversee that it's no hazing and nothing gets out of hand. So I am in a cadet squadron and the, I have a cadet commander. In the video, she spoke, that was Cadet Winkelbach. She's our current cadet commander and she runs the cadet portion of the squadron. I am there to make sure nothing happened. It's just like in the Navy, the, the captain could be on vacation, but he's responsible for that ship. It's the same thing with me. I'm responsible for the squadron as a whole. Um, in San Diego County, we have um, three cadet squadrons. We have a cadet squadron in Escondido, a cadet squadron in Chula Vista, and the cadet squadron in San Diego, um, which is um, over at the um, Air National Guard base there in Kearney Mesa off a of convoy court. Um, and we have two senior squadrons. Now the senior squadron is top heavy in pilots. That's where all the pilots hang out to talk pilonese and, but not just pilots are in that squadron. We have other people that's in the squadron, admin personnel, you know, logistics, but it's mainly pilots that's in the, and they're in charge of the airplanes. In um, group eight, we have two um, senior squadron. One is in Fallbrook and the other one is in El Cajon. And so we have airplanes that strategically station in the county. Um, we don't have any airplane at Brownfield because mostly all the pilots live north and it's be, it'll be too far to drive all the way down to Brownfield to dispatch the airplane. So we have one airplane at Montgomery and we have two airplanes at Gillespie, actually three airplanes at Gillespie Field right now. And we have one airplane up in Fallbrook. Now, in different groups, they have the airplanes strategically placed in their area. But for San Diego, we have four airplanes. Um, three is at Gillespie. And one is usually at Montgomery Field, and the other one is at um, Fallbrook. 
So do we have any questions? Uh oh, did I lose people? No, you're still here. Oh, okay. I have a question. Okay. Okay, for looking for hands. So go ahead. Okay, sorry. Um, who owns the airplanes? Um, Civil Air Patrol does. So um, it's out of um, the headquarters in um, Alabama. So they actually they're they're buying us another <laughs> airplane because we are now, and they want us to because of the lack of pilots, shortage of pilots. They want us to move heavily into getting the cadets their pilot license. So actually, we just got a brand new um, Cessna 172 that's to trigger that we use it for um, training. So far in my squadron, we have five cadets that got their solo wings. That and we have two that's in the program right now that's going through the program. There are scholarships available, so we help out the parents. Um, come up with some of the money, but the um, the scholarship usually covered for them to go to their training, pay for the CF, the um, certified flight instructor. So yeah, um, the Civil Air Patrol owned the planes. We don't um, have privately owned airplanes anymore. When Civil Air Patrol was first started, the planes used to be privately held. All right, thank you very much. Good oh, answer. No I have a question in chat here. Are there any communications programs in CAP? Oh yeah, we have a very incentive in um, communication program. So um, I, I am the communication officer for my squadron. Um, we we have an HF network, um, and we have um, UHF VHF network, and we do um, radio checks every night at seven o'clock, just like in um, the San Diego talk groups and the Aries. So um, we could talk, and now we have a a program called ready up that's i think it's like wind link so i could talk to other areas and other wings to my cell phone so i have the app on my cell phone uh, this is jim i've got a question okay go ahead hi eric yeah my grandson is uh, back in uh, kentucky and he's part of cap back there and uh I got him interested in the ham radio years ago. So his very first day, uh, he was assigned as the comms lead for his group. And uh, so that has paid off. But I was wondering, do you do any uh, uh, work across other states like uh, communications or, you know, long range between, let's say, the East Coast, West Coast or uh, various other states to do uh, testing, et cetera, to see in case of a, a real disaster, you'd be able to communicate with one another? Yeah, we yeah. do. And that's on the HF network. Outstanding. Thank you very much. Yeah. Appreciate your presentation today. Oh, no problem, sir. So if you can see, it's called Ready Up, and you can log in to the different repeaters. We have repeaters in all, all 50 states. And you could just log into the repeater, hit the, hit the mic, and just talk to that person that's in that area. So I think it's like WinLink. I haven't used WinLink yet. All any right. Other? Do we have any other questions? Well, I am not seeing any. Thank you very much, Eric. It was a great presentation. I learned a lot, uh, a lot more about uh, CAP than I knew before. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, the video didn't play. I, I know the video played, but no audio. I have to figure yeah. that out. Yeah. I have to figure that out. But if you watch the video, it's a lot of good information. They cover mostly all the stuff that we do in that video. They did a real good job of representing us. Yeah, well, the, the link is in chat. So if anybody wants to see the video, uh, go ahead, bring up the chat and uh, copy the link. And uh, you can watch the video with, uh, with some sound. Would you like me to post that to the reflector? Yeah, if you would. I will, maybe after the meeting. That sounds good. All right, any other questions or uh, for Eric or any other comments at all this evening, this morning? Do you have anything else, Bruce? Thanks, Dave. No further traffic for the morning. 
All right. Thanks everybody for being there. We'll get this uh, video copied and uh, Rob will get it posted here uh, a little bit later. Dave, this is, this is Jim and 60 AR. Go ahead, Jim. Yeah, does anybody have any uh, updates on the, the newer exams? I guess they're coming out in uh, July. Uh, some folks have said that they are trying to make the tests easier so that they can get more people in. Uh, any, anybody got any update on that? I know that the thing is uh, out. I haven't reviewed it. Rob's looked at some of the questions. Um, he, he didn't mention it, that he found it easier. Uh, they okay. have repeated some of the questions. I think they got rid of the LED question, you know, and uh, added a little more digital stuff and uh, and that sort of stuff. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't expect any major changes there. Okay, because somebody I know has work, been working to do to pass his test, and he'd heard that they were going to be easier, so he said, "Well, I'll just wait till July." And I'm trying to get him to go ahead and do it now. So thank you. Yeah, I. I recommend just go ahead and do it now we're going to have uh, if he's interested in the class we're going to have one more class um uh, probably the beginning of may okay thank you very much jay